So we're going to do today just a little basic uh, lapsau into the tandar exercise. It is an exercise, again. So when you're watching the video and you're imagining all of your amazing Bruce Lee understandings from other universes where you fight galactic monsters <coughs> and stuff, they don't pertain. So we're just doing the simple exercise of lapsau into tandar. So first, go ahead and here comes lapsau. You see his wusau comes up nicely and he's prepared in case I do go past so he doesn't get punched in the face, which he almost did just then. Now he's gonna go ahead. Okay, so he went right to tandar. You did tandar right to get there. And you'll notice that he's not wrist to wrist, which means that he's gonna slide right over the top of me, which means it's very easy for me. When I come in and he blocks me, I can slide in and do what I want. So it's important, again, the basics we want to be aware of, even though he's trying to cooperate, you can't have your hands sliding over the top. They have to be wrist to wrist, but that's another video we've already done. So Tandar is just going to be here, and I'm going to do Tandar to him. And why don't you lop me? He lops and I do Tandar. So it's quite simple. You may be familiar with the exercise. A couple things we just want to make sure to do is when he does Tandar, I want to be careful that what I've done here is, if you can see on the video, both of his hands are still being supported by my bomb, which limits what I can do with this hand, and it also gives him pretty much complete control of the center line. I want to let the one hand go. So his ton, his, uh, yeah, his ton dark <laughs> is, uh, is just hanging loose. But again, I will point out that he's still not wrist to wrist, and all that means is that I'll step in, back, and just rip him apart, because it doesn't do you any good if you don't have any control. So if you put something on a roof of your car and you don't ratchet it down, it slides back and forth when you stop, and when you accelerate, and the same thing's gonna happen to him. If he doesn't have this to where he can either expand with the punch and the, and the elbow and stop me without sliding like that, you think, oh, well, I'm sliding down. I'm doing that to, show that I could slide this way and now I'm inside. He's no longer wrist to wrist. He no longer has control. I'm at his elbows, which means he's dead. A thousand times dead. So it's important that either you stop it this way or you have your open palm to some degree and you're ready to stop it that way. So when I try to slide by and get in, I can't. The same way as I should in another exercise if I try to walk in this way. If he juts me, I'm not coming in. But if he's not wrist to wrist, I can come in all I want and do what I want. And this hands of no value to him. So when we do the tandar, we want to go forward energy on that, and we want to make sure that this wusao is a proper wusao, and then he can go to tandar on me, and that we have that again. So I'm doing lapsao, and then he'd stop, uh, he, he, he'll do lapsao, and I'll stop him with a tandar. Now I've stopped him with a tandar. For some tandar practice, you can, you can come here, and you can step out, clear, make your tan, don't go sideways forward energy only, and then you can come in and control him and punch or do whatever it is you want to do as a tandar. But when we're playing this exercise, we have Lops out here, he does tandar, I can stunt his tandar and he may not be able to stop me and I've just stayed kind of pretty much on the center, I just forced him off. And then if it becomes a fight, and that's the kind of Kung Fu he's playing, there's a million responses. One is, as he's giving me a little more response, I let that one go, catch it here and it's down and I strike or both of them come and then I come here and we get the same thing on the other side. Or I might, uh, he, if he forces it around, I can see that there's no way in because it's just a tug of war Kung Fu, which is really bad, muddy, heavy concrete. Brute Kung Fu is never any good. But anyway, if he does and he comes in at me and he stops it, then I just make a little, just make a little circle without really going off the center line. No, I'm not making it into Tai Chi Chuan, but I will if he goad me. And then there you go, like that. So. There's a number of ways, but it's important to uh, to remember to uh, when you're playing the lapsau exercises to to also have that tandar that you can that you can play with and, and practice with and see how he went. It's another thing when I do the tandar, he still has to do it just as if I'm lopping him. When I turn this way, it's just as if I made the lop. So he has to still respond by getting that bomb, because that's the way it works in, in lapsau exercise come here and when I grab him, if he doesn't go into a bong, he's in trouble. When he goes into the bong and he keeps his shoulders facing me and his wusao up, then, and no, I'm not gonna extend like that when I punch, I'm gonna punch and walk in. So that's why I didn't get him until there. 
I knew somehow or another I could defeat my own student in open mortal combat. So here's our Lapsal, Tondar, and I need to go. I can't stay here. That's no good. He'll collapse me. It's just bad Kung Fu right there to my Lapsal. And then from there, there's a lot of things I can do to come in and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I want to be fluid in it. So let's do it fluidly. Okay, so he didn't go right to his bong there. He took some time, went out, opened the door. It was kind of crazy. So there's a basic lobster exercise. I might watch this video to see if there was any tremendous value to it. But either way, it's a basic training tool. This was a good one. Next, Cheek Group.